Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another resin project. So today we are working on these adorable fall maple leaves. Technically, I suppose they could be for any season, but I wanted to use them on my fall tablescape. And to me, leaves are just fall, so they're fall. Um, I used a beautiful metallic copper oil-based paint to achieve this kind of movement. I don't even know what you call it. It just, it, it gives the, the resin a bit of a life of its own, which is nice. So this is a fun, easy project. It's a direct pour. So if you've never done resin before, you can do this project and we are going to jump right into it right now. All right, y'all. So let's jump right in to mixing our resin. So we are going to start by putting on all of our protective gear because that is always the most important. So, dun -dun -dun -dun. go ahead and put on my gloves, put on my respirator. And now I am going to make several projects at once, even though I'm going to be showing you these projects one at a time. And so in order to make the four or five different fall projects I'm working on, I'm going to go ahead and mix 900 milliliters of resin, and then I'll split it between those projects. I will put on the screen here how many milliliters we use for each individual project on that video. Um, and I am, of course, using my Total Boat Maker Poxy. This is a one-to-one -one ratio resin. If you want a full in-depth mixing tutorial for resin, I did just release my resin for beginners course. I will link that down below. I go over every single step in detail for all kinds of things, but mixing resin is lesson number one, because if you're going to make anything with resin, kind of an important step. But for today, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to mix 900 milliliters of resin here, and then we will get started with our individual fall projects. I'm so excited. We have so many fun things to make today. So as always, just dun -da -da -dun. one pump. So one pump, I'll be back once this is all mixed up and ready to roll. All right, so we've got all our resin mixed. We've got about, well, it doesn't really matter because we're using different amounts for each project, <laughs> but we've got about half copper and half of the copper flakes. So we are going to go ahead. I've let them sit for a minute. I'm going to use my heat gun to pop all those bubbles. <gasps> At least any bubbles that have come to the surface. Of course, we are using a silicone mold today, so we want to use a heat gun instead of a torch. That way we do not melt our silicone mold. But I'm going to go ahead and move everything out of the way so that we can bring our uh, silicone mold in and get started. Okay, y'all, so we are going to go ahead. I have this little leaf. Look how cute he is. And I love these because as you can see, they have the lines here. And those show up once the entire piece is done. So I think I'm going to end up making three or four of these for my fall table. Um, I just did a fall table and I want to just revamp it a smidge for Thanksgiving. So I did it a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to make four of these for that table. I will link it down below the table, but I'm going to use my copper. So this is a uh, tester's paint. It's a hobby brand from, um, I don't know. You can get it at most craft stores. I've used it for years as a model railway car paint. All right, so we're just going to fill this guy up. Oh, 
Oh, this is going to be pretty. I love this model railway car paint because it is oil based. And so while it's metallic, it can be either really transparent or really opaque. But the way it mixes into your resin, you can see it's not ever like a 100% solid color. It has this kind of metallic shift to it that is just really pretty. It gives your pieces a lot of movement, even when they're stationary pieces. So we're, we're gonna have to use maybe that stir stick to force it down the stem. Sometimes you can do it with the heat gun. So let me get that stir stick. And we're just gonna kind of guide it down here. Once you start it down a path, it will fill in and self level, but you kind of have to hit those dry spots. So see how it is already full? That's all we needed was just that little, little guide. Whoop, hair, I have long hair, it's everywhere. is definitely a fun, easy, beginner level project. You could make it with one color, you could make it with multiple colors, you could make it with clear resin and then paint on the front, but we are doing copper leaves. I think that'll be so pretty for fall. We're going to go ahead and set this aside. It is on a silicone mat and a baking tray so that I can pick it up level, move it inside and let it cure for 24 hours. We wanna cover it so that none of that hair, mine, dog hair, cat hair, dust, uh, debris, flies, for some reason like to land in your resin, um, <laughs> none of that gets in it and then we will unmold it tomorrow. All right, I will see you then. Okay, are you ready for this maple leaf? I love, see this is what I was talking about yesterday, how that copper metallic paint just like it doesn't dry flat. So we're just going to start pulling this back away from the edges and then at the very end kind of pull it away from the middle but the silicone really releases quite easily. All right, careful on the stem. Perfect. Oh my God, the front's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna just do the side so that we see it all at once. Oh, it's perfect. It's literally perfection. I cannot wait. I'm gonna make four of these. So I'm gonna make three more and then I'm going to put them on my table. And I do think that I'm going to make them different um, depths of copper. So this one's kind of light. I'll do maybe a extra light one, a really dark one, and and then we'll just have a whole array of maple leaves. So I'll be back to show you the final fun shots once they're all done. But so far, I really like this mold. I could even see if you wanted to add like names with your Cricut, they'd be really cute place cards on a plate. Maybe that's what we'll do. Oh, I can't wait. All right, you guys, I love these. So this was the first one we made and you can see the color shift and how light it is. So for the next one, I added quite a bit more pigment and he is solid on the front. And look at that color shift on the back. Like I almost wish this was the front, <laughs> but I love these lines and I could add some, you know, some glitter or mica powder or paint these lines to make them stand out. But I kind of just like the subtle difference. Um, I don't think I want to necessarily add paint to them and make them a huge focal feature. So I'm going to go pop these on my table. I do think, I don't know that I'll do it for this, but I already tried and they actually are a great size for coasters. So they'd be great little fall coasters. 
and I might just leave some on my end tables. But for now, I'm going to pop them on my fall tablescape and we will see how they look. See you over there. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.